I'm just ensuring that I have all the, yeah, permission settings. Okay. Perfect. There's a strong amount of silence. I feel like that's not a, that's not always a given with us. <laughs> Definitely. Just, usually, ha usually happens every, every meeting is that the same. <laughs> Honestly, wind me up. I'll fill all that silence. <laughs> Just all of it. Yeah, but it's true. Until we wait for some other fox to join, there's usually kind of silence, like outward silence. But yeah, I think we can officially start. So um, hello, everyone, and and welcome. Um, I'm very, very excited to have Executive Director Joseph Ahin and Champosi with us today to discuss our midterm goals um, for WordPress. Um, I'm Regis, and as you all know, I'll be facilitating today's session. And um, just before diving into our discussion, I thought I would share uh, briefly a few updates that um, just for extra visibility, the first one is uh, about some new experimental make dashboards. Um, uh, some contributors are working um, to offer like a snapshot of some make teams key metrics and ongoing projects. Um, I think there's an upcoming announcement soon. Probably uh, we can expect that by the end of the week, but I think that's a pretty uh, exciting update. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. And next on my list is a post on advancing the WordPress design system. Uh, the goal of this initiative is to um, consolidate all the existing tools uh, into a unified design system reference site so that anyone looking to contribute, contribute back to WordPress or extend the platform can do it in line with uh, like a shared design language and approach. Um, I think this effort is especially important as we look uh, into phase three of the roadmap and as we look at the admin redesign efforts. So I recommend giving that post a read if you haven't done so and keeping an, uh, keeping an eye out for the bi-weekly design share updates. Um, let me share one second there all the links in the chat so you know what I'm talking about. And all right, here you go. Um, and yeah, last but not least, uh, just as a reminder, uh, the State of the World site went live last month and everyone is welcome to attend this annual event and request a seat. So if you know of uh, someone who wants or is interested in attending, please direct them to the community interest form. I'm going to share the link as well in the chat. And um, all right, here you go. And that's what I got in my list for updates and reminders. I don't know if you have any questions or thoughts so far. Is the um the the advancing the WordPress design system? I read that, and is that is that intended for anybody touching .org? So plugin and theme developers as well, or is it is it specific? Well, I, I yeah. That's my question, really. Is it just designed for everybody or is it for plugin and theme developers specifically? I think it's uh, for plugin uh, like authors as well. I mean, if they are looking to extend the platform, I think those tools will come handy and useful. Yeah. Okay. But um, I can make an out and get back to you on that later. I mean, and I can also ask, uh, we can also ask Joe and who I'm sure he might be helpful, help. Yeah. Uh, he might be happy to yeah. share any other information I, I having read it i couldn't pause who was the intended audience for it but that would be helpful yes please thank you yeah of course I, I i'll make a note and i can follow up with you on that after the briefing all right um for if there are no more questions for now i mean if you have any thoughts questions uh during the session later uh just a reminder that you can share them in the chat um, I would encourage you to indicate the media outlet and the channel you represent. 
because that uh, help us, uh, first of all, have to help us to have some context, but also it's usually helpful for the recap and transcription purposes. But you are also welcome to raise your hand if that's easier. Um, okay, so I think we can get started with our main discussion. Um, over to you, Josefa. It's me. Hi, uh, I'm Josefa and I'm here with WordPress. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about our midterm goals. So WordCamp Europe, obviously, Matt showed up with his 11 opinions uh, about, about what WordPress needs to do, what it needs to be. Uh, and after that, I ended up having quite a few conversations with folks about like, how does this fit with the overall big pictures that we put out there? Uh, big, the big picture uh, post that we, that I put out. Um, and fortunately, everything, almost everything that showed up in those 11 points are still absolutely relevant to the big picture post that I put out. Now, the biggest change, obviously, this year is, uh, is around the CMS. So we had hoped to get phase three kind of prototyped and built out and put out in front of the community. But early on in the year, it became pretty clear that one of the uh, more pressing items for user facing, um, uh, I don't know, user satisfaction of WordPress is to maybe make our admin a little bit more modern looking and probably get all of our, you know, five different interfaces kind of looking the same, which I think is actually part of what that design system that Yoen published is about. Um, and so the work on phase three, the active, like everybody focused diligently on phase three work sort of paused early in the year while we took a look at the admin and what we wanted to be in the future, how blocks will work in there, um, and then ended up doing a bunch of foundational work, which is not user facing, a lot of uh, major backend elements and APIs to make sure that we can get that done. Uh, and so I've been really excited to see that design system get out because I think that one, it does kind of pull together some visual elements of what we are aiming for, and then also gives a common design language to WordPress. That is the hope, is that we can improve the user experience by having a more consistent look and feel across our admin, and then also having the dashboard and admin areas just be more modern and more in line with what the software actually is capable of doing now. Um, so that is probably the biggest shift from that big picture post, but it happened a, a long time ago. Uh, and so there are, however, four things in those 11 points that Matt brought up uh, at WordCamp Europe that I think really commit to that and, and support that change in direction. Obviously, the first one being that simple things should be easy and intuitive and complex things should be possible. Um, the admin area, along with just kind of having a massive influx of notifications, has gotten more and more complex as we have gotten through WordPress as a whole. Uh, and so getting that into a state that's a little bit easier to kind of fall into and understand is going to be really important. Um, and then there were three other things in there as well. One, that WordPress should be more opinionated and quirky, uh, that people who are building WordPress should be using WordPress, and a bunch of the uh, Gutenberg engineers recently did a ton of user, uh, user, what is this called? Sorry, for the recording, I am sick, and so I can't get my words sometimes. User testing, that's it. A bunch of user testing, um, not only to check flows for onboarding, which I know have been an ongoing concern for um, the project and for the software, but then also for like any basic activity that you want to accomplish so that you can feel successful and have the desire uh, to learn those bigger concepts, just trying to make those uh, a lot easier, a lot clearer and a lot quicker. Uh, and so that goes into that. And then if we get all of those things kind of back into an easy, comfortable state, then the the part that Matt shared about blogging and commenting and pingbacks being more fun uh, and allowing websites to be more dynamic again, I think that that shows up over time in it. Uh, the second element from uh, the second goal from our big picture post was around the community, uh, continuing to support 
um, our community as a whole through learning events and mentorship. Um, and that would be for current and future contributors. Early on this year as well, the community facing teams, the event folks uh, had a big shift toward uh, less focus on bringing in new contributors, which has been our lifelong focus, uh, and more focus on bringing in new users with the belief that everything that we've done to enable contribution will still function as as it always has. Um, so the work that is going in now is to get better feedback from people who are attending our workshops and our events and making the online learning as clear and important and valuable as all of the business stuff and networking that you can do at meetups and word camps and then also all of our flagship events we have the dashboards coming which ray has mentioned um and that's part of the reason that we're doing that like we're working to standardize the questions that we ask uh new and returning attendees to our events so that our organizers can have some clearer and better information to make decisions that are helpful for them and impactful for them um, we also are foregoing the giant annual survey this year um <clears throat> we're going to take advantage of the giant annual survey that um, Stack Exchange does. We're included in it uh, again this year. Uh, and so we're gonna take advantage of that information because they get more people from outside of the WordPress space uh, to give us some better information, more accurate information about future users of WordPress as opposed to current users of WordPress uh, so that we can kind of get some, some indications of what our opportunities are for future growth, but then also um, making space for those kind of ad hoc polls that we see popping up on LinkedIn and, and Twitter and anywhere else where people can just say like, hey, do you use it for this or this? If you were doing this activity today, would you choose this or this? Uh, and get kind of more timely feedback for the features that we're trying to experiment and build toward uh, that way. And so the things from Matt's 11 points that fit in with that are that we should have better feedback loops in general. Agreed, hard agree. Uh, it doesn't help us to be moving forward with speed if the direction that we're moving forward in is not something that our uh, users need or want from us. Uh, and then also one of his call outs was to be a supporter by going to meetups, events, uh, and other things that help us stay close to users because we are the people who are building WordPress. And so, uh, if we are building it, we should be using it. And that includes if we're building it, we should be talking to the people who are using it in ways that we expect uh, and ways that we don't expect. And the best ways to do that is to get to those events, either as organizers or just regular old attendees. I'm headed to WordCamp US and I'm going to do my best to be a regular old attendee, sitting in some sessions, seeing what's happening and not. Um, and that'll be a change of pace for me as well. So that's a that's a kind of one of those changes that occurred on our second big goal. Uh, and then our third one actually has not changed too much. Uh, the third uh, big goal that we had was around the ecosystem and especially focusing on the data liberation project to make uh, the process of getting from one non-WordPress space to a WordPress space easier and then WordPress to WordPress um, as required. That has been ongoing all year. We had a few prototypes at the start of the year that were kind of okay, but not quite what we were looking for. Uh, and it was around WordCamp Europe that we had gotten a pretty viable um, concept of what could work and what will work, I think, for easier migrations. And the hardest parts of that, the, the parts that require you, know, you to be as brilliant as Adam Zielinski are almost done we're ready to start to to start hooking into it and extending it like we do any other wordpress thing and so for that actually um we're kind of get gearing up for an adoption phase of it um of all of the like top 100 plugins that exist in the wordpress repo i think only 12 of them use blueprints so that when you are testing a plugin inside playground it gives you some information some some fake data so that it's clear what it's trying to do versus what you are hoping it will do uh, and also so that it functions correctly in there and so that's going to be our next phase for that uh, is to get the hardest parts built so that so that every developer 
uh, in the WordPress ecosystem can make a blueprint and put it in there. And so their users know, is this solution something that's going to solve my problem? Um, as we have been gearing up for that, we also are really nearing, I believe it, I feel it in my bones, nearing the time when we can just put a try out WordPress now button on the homepage that takes you to a playground instance that has a, a valuable, not valuable, um, a, a useful theme, a theme that looks like what we want uh, a, a good first timer site to look like and a couple of plugins. So you get a sense for like what a theme is, how it works, what plugins are and how they work and really can, can test drive your site before you get into it. We're really close to that, I'm pretty sure. And so the things that Matt had brought up uh, this summer, if you're in the Northern hemisphere uh, about that in his 11 points were wikis for documentation. We are actually prototyping a playground driven wiki experience for our documentation. Um, and that looks like it's going well, I don't understand it, but there is a post out that we can uh, get a link for and share with you all. Um, getting forums back into kind of a, a front and center space so that people can have not only conversations, um, but also like see who else around them is having the same issues or the same uh, excitements, the same extending uh, opportunities that they are having. Uh, and a lot of work is going into that. We have uh, a, a bug smashing event for it at WordCamp US coming up, which should be pretty fun. Um, and the call to having plugins and themes, having mirror infrastructure to the WordPress project is still ongoing. Better theme previews, obviously, Playground is going to drive that. Um, and the work with that deliberation is Playground driven at the moment. And so as we are building out all of these things uh, for the data liberation project powered by Playground, I'm pretty sure the rest of these uh, holes that we have in the new user experience when they're trying to just decide whether WordPress works for them or not, will also uh, get a few bridges over those gaps and at that point can only be made better by our plugin authors and our theme authors um, really embracing that new tool and making sure that their tools work inside it. And so a little bit, Matt's 11 points show up almost as like, tactical elements that live inside the goals that we have for the WordPress project this year. Um, we pulled together a whole list of projects that we either have shipped or uh, are about to ship that specifically relate to all of those uh, 11 tactics that go along with the three goals that we have. And I'm going to try to get it published before WordCamp US so that we all kind of have the same sort of thing that we're looking at. Um, and I, I think maybe Reyes can get you all an early, an early copy of it uh, before, before it gets out there so that if you have questions around that, we can get those answered. Or if there are anything that doesn't really make sense to you all, you can let us know about that too. Um, but that's kind of the, that's kind of the long and short of how those all fit together. Um, and in the post that we pulled together about the work that's been done just kind of in the last quarter around those uh, tactical elements for our goals. I was tired looking at it. It was like four pages long. And so we're going to try to make it a little shorter. Um, but it's just a continuing testament to the work that the community does toward the things that we think are going to make WordPress be able to grow in the future. And so I'm really excited to be able to get that post out for you all. Like I said, depending on how fast my brain continues to work while I'm sick, I'll get that out before WordCamp US. I believe that we can do it. Uh, and so, yeah, that's kind of the lightning tour of where we are with that. And I'll pause for questions on that or anything else, I guess. Can I just raise my hand? All right. Yes. Do I need to do it virtually or can I just actually do it? Like that? Um, Nathan um, Wrigley from the Tavern, I guess, probably the easiest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at Matt's post, the 21, and yeah. the points two and point nine, he uses the, the words quirky in point nine and fun in point two. 
And yeah. that was what I, I, I was in the room when that happened. And that was what I, got, that was the impression that I got when I left is that basically the whole thing should just be more fun. It was that word fun. And I'm just wondering yeah. if you've got any intuitions as to like how we do that. What, what, what could we do to make WordPress more fun? I mean, Matt says here, you know, static websites are better than uh, normal ones. Uh, and he says, no, he core says should dynamic be... websites. Dynamic. Are than... That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but... Core should be opinionated and quirky Easter eggs, languages with personality. It's difficult to translate jazzy. Uh, yeah. I, I'm all for having fun. I, I think, I, but I'm, I'm just wondering what you're, how do we, I don't know, because it's easy to go from fun to just silly, isn't it? <laughs> how do we, how do we yeah. keep things fun? Have you got any ideas around what we could do to make it more fun? I love how this question kind of is like, Josepha, how fun are you? And how yeah, that's much right. fun can you make WordPress have? <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. So there are a few things. So for one, there are, as we get um, the admin into a more modern space, I think one of the things that is just kind of a small delight that we see around uh, software at the moment, places like Discord have this, I think. Facebook had it for a while, but like minor animations on your icons, which you can turn on, turn off, depending on, on your motion needs. Um, I think things like that are going to be available to us once we get the admin in a better space. There are, there were a number of like core eggs, Easter eggs that were there for a long time that we took out um, that existed in comments it existed in track it was just like weird nerdy things for people who are digging for weird things like there was a specific set of words that you could say in track that caused like an eagle to flash up on the screen for some reason i only did it once and it scared me to death but i <laughs> um obviously things like that in our own spaces in our own work are possible and and welcomed but I think that one of the things that the community can do is like, <clears throat> excuse me, like when we were doing the next gen events for WordCamps and kind of trying to figure out like what new and interesting versions of getting people together to talk about WordPress can we still kind of uh, do? I think that's a lot of the spaces where we have some opportunity. So some some cute and surprising design things probably not cute and surprising code things like you want that to be pretty predictable but uh you know cute and surprising design elements some uh unusual and enriching uh events probably is where we can do that and then of course matt is kind of sponsoring art across the entire wordpress ecosystem and i think that that probably has a bit to do with wanting to bring some fun back into the space as well like when we had those cute little spam bots at wordcamp us last year and um and i, I think that there's going to be some art around wordcamp us this year as well so yeah thank you Josefa, we have some questions from Javier in the chat as well. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can read them. <laughs> perfect. Go yeah, go ahead, Javier. So the, I, I have four. The first, uh, the first is, uh, is there a roadmap uh, to integrate the feature notification in phase three? Because that's a project that has been around and a lot of people is uh, messing with the messages and everything. So is there, is yeah. there an idea to integrate that now or, or is a project that is going to be around until somebody adds it into the core? So I think that we should tackle your first and second question together around real time collaboration in okay. phase three. Cause I think that that is gonna, is gonna impact this. So on the one hand, at the moment, I don't I don't think that we have a strong sense for notifications specifically being in the in the phase three roadmap, but I do have a roadmap that we're pulling together for the next couple of releases. So I can take a look and see if if we can more confidently target it for either one of those. So there's that. Um, as far as like to get it into phase three. 
because we as a community have have shifted our attention toward the admin and dashboard experience rather than phase three, like real-time collaboration is moving forward and and we would like it to continue to move forward. I think it's important, but probably less important than getting the overall software looking a bit more modern. And so real-time collaboration, still open to contribution, but I've asked everybody to focus more on the admin so that the software looks modern. Um, <laughs> great workflows are good and important, but like if we if we're trying to get out to a bunch of new users, we also need to absolutely make sure that we don't look like we're a software from 2000. Mm -hmm. 2000 that was 24 years ago quarter yeah. of a century ago i hate it um <laughs> that notwithstanding um 2000 and, and when was when was crazy horse 2008 so uh i think that that's probably the most important part of what we're looking at in the in the near term and i realize that that's not like what's the plan for phase three and how's real-time collaboration going but i do think that that pause that we've taken there is really key. Notifications and how to handle them obviously are a real problem and on the minds of a lot of folks in the community. We used to have some pretty clear understandings of like what notifications should be and how they should be managed. And I think that at some point we loosened those expectations and those guidelines when we kind of loosened some of the guidelines around uh, plug-in review. I think that that's primarily when when that really started to be taken over. Uh, and so there is some systemic work to do. There are some some like contributor program types of rehabilitation things that we've got to do in there, but then also obviously a mechanism that makes notifications a little bit more corralled and easy to find when users need it. And so I'll take a look at those roadmaps for the next uh, couple of releases and see what we can fit in there. Uh, but that's a great question. Okay, uh, the next one um, about the the test WordPress now or whatever it will be. Um, it's going to be only a clean installation of WordPress, or there is an idea to have like more working with blueprints. Like, okay, uh, I want to test something like an e-commerce, so we can show an e-commerce, and or I want a blog, and we can show a blog. Is it's going to be that way or a generic WordPress or? Yeah, at the moment, the plan is just for a generic WordPress for a couple of reasons. One, because we want them to see what it looks like as close to out of the box as possible. Okay. Um, that, that way they understand like this is what the basic interaction looks like, the basic interface looks like so that they are not surprised when they get a basic installation running and then they're like, I thought there was a e-commerce site in here. Okay. Like we don't want it to be too far away from what their initial experience will be. And so that's part of the reason. The other part of it is that it's actually very difficult um, to get uh, additional plugins set up with enough data and a false data coming in. Um, not false uh, example, D test Danny, data yeah. coming in that it looks right so that mm -hmm. you understand what's in there. Um, there are a couple of prototypes that we've been, that uh, that the folks who work on Playground have been working on uh, that are bringing in a bit of sample data so that you can see how something would look. But for e-commerce in particular, that is very difficult to do. It's actually one of the primary hurdles that we're having also with data liberation, mm -hmm. figuring out what is in the front of a site um, and what is available like in an admin area is pretty easy, but having the functional parts that go along with it so it still works is actually kind of hard at the moment. So you can see that there's a shopping cart. You can put like a shopping cart block into the mm -hmm. playground instance, but that doesn't mean that it works or that you know what you would need in order to make that work yeah. on the other side of it. And so we're trying to figure out how to get more complex initial sites shown uh, and then also exportable, instantly publishable to your individual host that you're hoping to work with, that you're hoping to, to get hosted on. Uh, but we're just 
finding that to be a little more complicated than we had hoped. We're, so the MVP of it is plain vanilla WordPress, and then we'll figure out some alternatives for how to get to the other things. But um, I think that we found a similar problem with Frontenberg when we first put that on WordPress.org. WordPress.org slash Gutenberg is, is the back end of a WordPress site, yeah. basically. Um, and when we first put it up there, it had uh, just the block editor and that was it. And so that was kind of helpful for folks when they figured out where, the, where it lived. But when they just went into plain WordPress, they do just get dumped into the dashboard and sometimes couldn't figure out how to get to where the, the block editor was. And so trying to, to make that experience a bit better this time around is an important part of that. So, yeah. Okay, the last. Uh, <laughs> for now. Uh, in the community... <laughs> in the community... Now, I yeah, yeah no, because <laughs> my mind always asks questions. Yeah. Uh, is there a roadmap on migrating from meetup.com to gatherpress? Um... I know no. right now is is yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of testing. But basically, yeah. I I'm hosting the the testing <laughs> website now, so I I know yeah. how it's going. But uh, I know they are working on on a starting to integrate things with WordPress.org and everything. But I don't know if yeah. there is there is some idea on when. Uh, that will be a reality, or if yeah. for example, if some new meetup group or some new community wants to start, it will be on on GatherPress and not in Meetup or something like that. Or... Yeah, there's not a there's not a roadmap for that at the moment. I think that we're considering this like a, a testing period for GatherPress, which is fine. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're having a little bit of difficulty getting people back up and running in their in-person events. And so we want to make sure, I want to make sure that the tools that they can use are tools that feel as comfortable as possible for them so that it's not this additional lift. Like I want to put together a WordPress event. I can use Eventbrite or Meetup or I can use mm. this custom tool. Um, and so I think that the future for getting on GatherPress still is there. I think it makes sense for us to have something that is more aligned with our open source thoughts and opinions. Uh, but at the moment, I just want to make sure that there's not any extra hurdles for folks yeah. that are trying to either return to the habit of having in-person events happen or join us for the first time. Uh, and so great question. And it's, I think the work that's being done with GatherPress is good. I think the testing with um, groups that are getting on there right now is also good. Uh, it'll help us figure out like how to get those connections better into profiles and also into the ecosystem uh, of sites as a whole. But right now there's not a roadmap to get everybody over there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just a quick note that they're actually um, seeking uh, feedback from uh, organizers. So yeah, share the latest update in chat. Thank you. Um, now, why I think uh, you have another question. Yeah, uh, I will start with the one I didn't mention in the chat, if I can. <laughs> it's not a mention, but it's very related with the Gather Press and Meetup. Uh, I'm going to host Meetup in, yeah, in one hour or something. And I've been having problems with the email the deliverability or the, the deliver oh, of the emails yeah. in Meetup, which is quite sad because <laughs> returning from the summer that we did a two months break, it's less easy to tell the other people that come back in September, we will talk about this and that. Yeah. And I've been sending, I usually just send one mail because I'm very mindful of <laughs> the inbox of the people. But several people told me that they didn't get it. So I hmm. sent a second one and some of them got them, but some not. So this is just one thing I will... Did they just never arrive or did they go into no, spam? No, never, or... never arrive. Never arrive. Never the, arrive. the spam and check-in hmm. is always the second question. Did you check the spam box? Yeah. And in this case, not. So I just wanted to share 
in case yeah. it's happening to more people uh, and maybe it's just it's been something years since extreme. we had that problem yeah. with meetup but we can reach out to them okay our our, okay. our person over there and see what's happening that would be great because if not one of the upsides of using meetup is really less an upside <laughs> because yeah. you cannot yeah. reach to those people and you can't get to anybody <laughs> so the, the the question that i wanted to do is more with the extender hat so I've mm -hmm. been playing with the blueprints, playing around blueprints. I love how you can set up a theme and import mm -hmm. demo content, and you can really do a one click, like, look how cool this looks. Yeah. But I cannot do the same if I'm putting a block theme in the repo, because they will mm -hmm. activate it, and it's going to be quite sad. They, they will see a nice home homepage, but they will not have any onboarding experience. Uh, so specifically for block themes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So okay. my question is if there is anything thought about that because I think that this diminishes quite a lot the experience of the a newcomer that is maybe seeing a very cool demo in Playground mm -hmm. and then they install, they activate, and they say why is there is this difference between the cool demo I just saw and this thing that I just <laughs> installed. So yeah. the second point is that there are some, we, I, I can program something to make that, uh, but I cannot put it in the repo. And more importantly, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I, I really want to have an extend an standard to adhere and then use it. So yeah, my question is is if there is any idea or anything planned, and if there is not, if you would consider it, because I've been talking with some automaticians, just asking, and is there anybody working on this? My feeling or my sense is that not right now, and I feel that it's yeah. a bit more important that may looks for user experience. Yeah, that would be all. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think you're right. Like, I I understand that the majority of of the decisions that we're trying to make on behalf of users um, is like, did what they do in one spot also look like what they expected it to do when they get on the outside of it? And I think that they, that it counts for this as well. Like, we never want to say to someone, "This is what you're getting." And then when they confirm that they want it, they hit publish or hit export or whatever. It doesn't look like what it looked like on the inside. Same problem that we're having with like putting an e-commerce test me on the homepage, like getting that to look the same as vanilla WordPress will never happen. Um, and so I think that that it's the same sort of answer to a different kind of question, which is that, yeah, we obviously absolutely need to make sure that the test area is as close to the reality area as we possibly can make it. It is true that no one is currently working on that for block themes inside automatic, but I don't think that means that no one could work on it. If you've got a solution that you think would work across the board for block themes and classic themes, although I'll finish the, the thought then I think that you should build a prototype and put it up as a, as a feature proposal uh, and see if we can get other people to work on it. I think that's a great idea. And yeah. then here's the other thought that I had. Okay. I have been wondering if like we could at contributor days have these, these contributor drives, contribution drives where people take the classic themes and rebuild them as block themes and just republish them in that way um, because we got so many classic themes that are so great. My favorite theme of all time is 2012. And I know that that means that I just like old design things, but I just write, I don't have a lot of visual stuff on my, on my blog. And so like, of course I like old, old word based things. Um, but if I had that one in a block way, I probably would try to use it again in a couple of spaces. But yeah, I've been wondering if that would be a fun thing to do or a not fun thing to do. But right now the, the theme uh, uh, tables at contributor days are doing like everybody show up and we're going to build a block theme together and then we'll publish it by the end of the thing. And so like, if we're going to do that, why not do it with some beloved classic themes that probably could get a new life as a, as a block theme. So yeah, I didn't think ask that, that question, but no, no, but I think it makes sense. But res responding to, to the previous thing, I don't have really 
the time and bandwidth to do a proper something that I would like to have in core. So uh, the closest thing I've been seeing is a proposal mm -hmm. that Mike, Mike McAllister did in some point. Oh. I don't know if you heard about Oli WP. It was a theme that it was with an, an onboarding. And it the, the onboarding part was stripped out because it was not meeting the, the repo uh, guidelines, yeah. which makes sense. Uh, but I think something like that, indeed it was built with React and everything, something like mm -hmm. that would be really, really nice to have as a foundation. And yeah. it would be great if someone that could put more time on it or a small group working on that. And I really think, sorry for being a bit <laughs> like going in the same direction, I really think that themes are the entry point of a lot of people. And if they are yes. not engaged by the first install and activation, we will lose them. So that's why I think that this part is important. And with that, I close my <laughs> my point. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. It, we have seen for years um, that whatever the theme is, is what people assume their WordPress is. And so if they didn't like the theme, if the theme didn't work for them, then they didn't like WordPress and WordPress didn't work for them. So I agree with you on that. What else we got? I was just saying that um in the comments that we yeah. should get Jamie Marslin to do a speed build oh. where he gets where he gets two people yeah. to rebuild two classic themes in 30 minutes. <laughs> I love that'd it. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> I bet he would do it. Yeah. yeah. I have one question. I if, have one answer. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, Joseph, if you could also share any um, your thoughts on any like initiatives um, that you think could benefit from increased awareness and like support from media folks. Any yeah. initiatives? Yeah, like a specific audiences. Um, I think um, I know some folks are you know, like, uh, or um, are interested in knowing more about, you know, like uh, priorities, like ampli for amplification. So I think it, if you could share your thoughts on that or any specific initiatives that you think would welcome more, more help and support. Yeah, so there are two that I will, that I have been saying all year and I'll say again, cause I mean it then, I mean it now. The first one uh, is, is around data liberation and specifically because it's powered by Playground. So data liberation obviously is helping people migrate from one site to another. The more people that we enable to be able to use our tools and our, um, our CMS, uh, the better for them obviously and for the open web as a whole, um, but then also for us because we're always trying to figure out how to make sure that we can still grow. Um, but all of the work, because data liberation is such a complex problem, every bit of work that we do there enables the filling of those gaps that I mentioned before in the user experience. Uh, anytime that you have a new user, like it used to be the case that the first stop on your WordPress learning journey was probably wordpress.org. And so you got to the homepage and from there you could get to the showcase, you could download, you could learn about the code and and uh, and the people building it. You could learn about the community and the people building it. Those were kind of the four big things that we wanted people to do on the website. Um, and I don't think that's the case anymore. I don't think that people get to wordpress.org as their first uh, experience of WordPress anymore. I think that what they do have is a bunch of content that's around us saying either like, these are the things that could be better, or these are the things that I do love uh, and and everybody should look at. And so once they get to WordPress, they're pretty knowledgeable about what they are worried the problems are for them and they want to look at something really specific. And so getting some way for them to see the back end as quickly as possible, I think matters. Getting them to see themes that look pretty close to what they're going to get when they unbox it for themselves so that they know whether it's 
too complicated, too simple, missing functionality. Like the the decision making once they get to the pages that we have that are really prominent are so different now. Um, and I think that that what we can enable for hands on experience of it through the work on playground solves a lot of those problems for us. And so we've got to figure out how to get Playground able to do it and then figure out how to get everybody to really adopt it and embrace it. Uh, and that will help themes and plugins be easier to sell, easier to get into the hands of WordPress users. Um, and then of course, like if someone's wanting to use your product and your product works with WordPress, then we wanna make sure they understand what WordPress looks like too. Uh, we don't wanna be a hindrance in anyone's sales process as it goes uh, with their products. And so that's a really big thing. It has been, like I said, very hard to work on because it's a really complex kind of uh, set of tools, but we are really, really close to having it be ready for the community to get in and get their hands on. Uh, and so once that happens, I hope that everybody helps us get the word out that it's available for you to get in and extend and make work with your stuff so that we can teach people how to work with our stuff and your stuff together. So that's a big one. And then the other thing is um, we have this big shift in our events uh, that is coming. So like I said, for all the whole year, we have been from an events and community perspective, focusing more on our new users and their experience with us. And part of the problem that we often hear from sponsors and organizers is that like they're getting a lot of the same people that come and talk to them. Um, and I know that we keep getting stats that are like 40%, 50% first time attendees at various events that we are hosting, but it's not translating into, and then they go see sponsors and then they go see the other things that are available in it. Um, and so I think that word camps have become kind of a black box. Uh, it's not easy to tell what's coming in them. It's not easy to tell whether it's for you or not. And then once you get there, there's just so much happening and it looks like there are a bunch of people who already know everything. Um, and so I would, I would love to demystify our events a little bit and as we are demystifying, help people to understand that like, if you truly are brand new to this and you feel a little anxious, we also have all of these online things where you can learn about the software, learn about the community, learn about contribution, whatever it is, um, just so that you have a sense for what you're getting into. And so I think that those are the two things, big initiatives that I really, I really would love a lot more chatter about in the space. Um, and then, as soon as we get a, a prototype for our new admin, like we're going to need a lot of feedback on that to get it right because with millions of people are looking at that every day. And if we suddenly break it for millions of people um, because we couldn't figure out how to be loud enough about the fact that that was changing, we're going to, we're going to have a surprise. We're going to have a Drupal eight moment where they were like object oriented programming forever. And then they lost half of everyone. We don't want that. We have worked really hard all throughout Gutenberg to not lose half of everyone. And so we don't necessarily want to break it with an admin change. But yeah, it's going to be, those are the three big things that I think really are going to need a lot of um, attention and focus. So. No, I, I go <laughs> again. <laughs> Okay. Uh, something we've been talking for some time, but uh, a few months ago, the the Cyber Resilient Act was approved. Yes. Uh, it's not yet on calendar, but I think in 2025, maybe. Yeah. So uh, how is WordPress going to comply <laughs> with the CRA? Yeah, so the, the CRA initially had a really bad carve out for open source that made it, as far as I am concerned, impossible for all of our extended community to function because they were going to have to have this incredibly high burden of proof to, to prove that like they weren't, I don't know. Also the definitions of the digital assets, I think were not very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we did really get involved with that and um, and the carve out for open source is substantially different at this point and is much more in line with what we can and need to be able to do. So at the moment, 
there's not a lot that WordPress is going to necessarily need to do, but we are keeping an eye on it and just making sure that we understand how it is moving and changing over time. Um, all of the major open source CMSs are planning to try to get together to talk through like what the immediate future impacts are of this now that it looks a little bit different and also if there are other pieces of legislation, because I think that there are like four additional pieces of legislation that we have general concerns about um, the impact on on our uh, communities and yep. our software. Yeah, yeah, because they 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 got out the the developer involvement with the security part and everything. So that's that's mm -hmm. great for everybody, but there are a lot of things like uh, information. Uh, forcing updates, uh, security updates, and that th those kind of things that everybody is going to comply, open source or, or not. So we need to start thinking because that's a lot of work for Meta, and Meta is not <laughs> a team that has a lot of time to do a lot of things. So yeah. that's that's more more my concern because I I know everything is is. Uh, on air, yeah. uh, but th there are some things that is, are not going to change and, and we mm. need to, to look on, on that. It sounds like you have put a lot of thought into it. So why don't you send me your list of things that you're concerned <laughs> about and we will make sure that we have covered all of them. I have a project <laughs> about that. So <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been working on, on, on that for, for two years because I knew that that was going to come in and, and we need yeah. to, to, to include that on I, I, I was uh, in last year work at US, I talked with uh, Otto and mm -hmm. he told me that there are some tools, internal tools that allow to do some of the things, but those are manual right now, but right. they need some work to, to open and not be abused uh, for everybody. So yeah. I, I think we have some road uh, made, but uh, there are some things to, to, to do. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I will look forward to your list and project then. Okay. <laughs> May I ask one more thing, please? Um, yeah. Uh, to, to anybody, really. Um, I uh, Thank you, uh, Chloe. She just gave me the name of Alex Kirk in terms of... Um, <laughs> the data liberation project but i'm curious about the playground on the homepage button is there a point person who who might be able to give me some i don't know intel about yeah. that or an interview that'll about be that? adam zelinsky but okay. also adam uh, adam and alex work together so, oh, so alex that, Kirk okay. can also help Perfect. with that yeah that's great yeah. thank you that's lovely they're doing a lot of really complicated r d that most of the time i understand as long as all you want is like the surface level information if you want really complex uh explanations of what is happening um they will be they will be your people so i, I just describe it as voodoo that's uh, ah, same. <laughs> just, just yeah but thank you magic yeah. happens yeah exactly <laughs> press a button and it's amazing yeah thank you that's oh. perfect Cheers. yes Looks like we have about five minutes left. Yep. I was actually um, going to share that I want to be mindful of everyone's time. So I don't know if it, uh, there are any other questions. Good, because I can't answer any questions in five minutes. <laughs> We all know this about me. We've learned it over time. <laughs> cool. Well, I really appreciate everyone showing up um, and inviting me along for this. This was great. I love talking to you all um, and answering your questions. Uh, and yeah, this was yeah. this was really enjoyable. Thank you, Josefa, for your time and and for sharing your insights. Nathan, I see your hand. I don't know if that's a question or. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for contributing to today's discussion and for sharing your questions as well. Um, just as a reminder, um, you know that, uh, as you know, the recap and the recording uh, will be published in the coming days. And if you have any other questions, uh, just feel free to reach out on Slack. All right. Bye, everyone. And thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.